All right, so Gary Gensler's antics are back at it again, and gosh, we're going to have to talk about this. So um, it's going to be fun. I don't know if it'll be fun for you guys. It's not going to be fun for me because I think the whole situation is kind of a, a bit of a challenge, not only on innovation, but how the crypto markets are going to be able to go forward. So again, uh, my name is Paul Barron. Welcome back into Tech Path. All right, so let's get into it today. And um, before we get started, I'm going to tell the guys over on the Crypto Pit, can you guys send me a feed right up here on the uh, main monitor? Yep, thanks. All right, before we get started, uh, we're going to move into iTrust Capital, and that is our sponsor for today. I think we need some help out there, and if you're looking at long-term holding, this is a place to do it. Uh, you can open a crypto IRA pretty simply. Just simply jump in. Uh, you can do a lot of things on gold, silver, all sorts of stuff out there, and they have a whole uh, array of tokens, including even metaverse tokens. So if you like that, make sure and take a look at iTrust Capital. Use our link below to get a $100 funding reward, uh, and it does help the channel out. All right, so let's get into it today. There's been a couple of um, you know, big news items, of course, the Gensler situation. I'm going to play this, and it's very cringeworthy. I'm going to play it, and then we'll talk about why this is a very intriguing strategy by Mr. Gensler. So let's just play the clip and get to it. Nonetheless, this helps protect investors. It increases trust in our markets. Getting these platforms to comply with the securities laws will benefit investors and the crypto market. As with seatbelts and cars, we need to ensure that investor protection comes standard in the crypto market. All right, so... As you can see, I mean, he's essentially going into the function of talking to people, I believe, that aren't even invested in the crypto markets right now. So either he's trying to pave the way into the mass market to help support his essential challenge and attack on the traditional crypto markets. So he's definitely not talking to crypto investors and probably not even talking to any sophisticated investors. This is a very uh, cagey approach toward marketing of how to put the American public behind the SEC. Only problem is, is there's an agenda there that obviously plays into big banks, how this all plays out. I'll get into this in a second with a clip from John Deaton, but it starts to play out into a sense of trying to get the normal everyday American to support and sponsor what the SEC is trying or attempting to do in terms of crypto regulation uh, by litigation. So that's been the problem, obviously, with the XRP thing, all of that stuff. It's definitely an interesting strategy. The question is whether or not this will work. I think I think Gensler's going to see his day in the sun, and when I see that, meaning his walking papers pretty soon. I want to play this clip by John Deaton. Uh, he goes into a lot around this. Let when did the SEC get involved? They filed a lawsuit against FTX and Sam Bankman fraud on behalf of 30 venture capitalists. So who are they protecting? They're protecting those VCs who risk money all the time as a part of their business model. They didn't file a case on behalf of the retail customer of FTX. And so they have completely abandoned the individual investor They've abandoned accredited investors. You go back to when he was the chairman of the CFTC, MF Global happened under his watch. And what was his excuse? His excuse, Ray, was that he couldn't ax he couldn't figure out how to access his work email from home. So I just want people to think about this. The this is this is this is Gary Gensler who said that. Yes. Gary Gensler testified at Congress, right, that when this was all happening, he couldn't access his email. Ray, he's considered a child prodigy, and he was considered, uh, no, not considered, he was the youngest partner in the history of Goldman Sachs. The guy yep. is a smart guy. Everybody says his problem is that he's always the smartest guy in the room, right? But this child prodigy, the youngest partner in the history of Goldman Sachs, couldn't figure out his work email. And that's why, you know, blah, blah, blah. So you know that his integrity and his credibility are questionable at best. But let's just just look at competence. You forget corruption. Competence. He's incompetent. All of this has happened under his watch. He should go. In 2018, and it's on uh, the Crypto Law website, uh, there's a video of Gary Gensler while he was at MIT, and he states on stage in 2018, April 2018, that the crypto market needs clarity. Those are his words. He even said, Ray, that Ripple, the company Ripple and Ethereum, 
deserve clarity and they need it. Now, that was 2018 when he was not chairman. We fast forward to today. He's chairman of the SEC and he can do something about it, right? And what is his position? His position is that it's always been crystal clear and that he's not going to create new rules. He's not going to change any laws or provide any more guidance that the Howey case from 1946 and all the other things, case law is enough clarity and that these companies need to come in and register. He won't give guidance. So clearly capital formation, let's let's ask this. In the Block 5 bankruptcy, Ray, do you know who the number two largest creditor is? I do not, John. Who is it? The SEC. Wow. All right, because there was a $100 million settlement, remember, between BlockFi and Gary Gensler's SEC. Yep, BlockFi yep. had paid $70 million of it. There's still $30 million owed to the SEC. So BlockFi's bankruptcy, our SEC is the second largest creditor that is above customer deposits. So how does that happen with capital formation? Are you helping companies capital formation when you're the second largest creditor in a bankruptcy? It's absurd that's what i meant by corrupt i know that was a long clip there but the point that john was making as you clearly saw i mean it's the it's the situation of gensler may not necessarily be the real architect of what's happening right now and this goes back to things and ideas that i've had for a long time around this is really more wall street and the big banks this is a structural shift that we're seeing right before our eyes in the financial system and and i think that in itself is concerning the powers of be. And obviously, Gensler is simply one of the forgemen that is going to be out there pushing this narrative and continuing to go in and we're here to protect you, which is the word, first words that you should be uh, listening for when the government says uh, we're here to protect you, turn around and, and run. Uh, and I think this is things that are starting to play out in a big way. I want to go over here to page eight to show you the SEC current enforcement activity. And I'm going to go down to this chart and show you a little bit of a run up here obviously all the way back into yeah can you get can you guys see that oh sorry sorry let me go to page uh page eight sorry yeah they all kind of look the same all right so these were the inf you know let's make sure i'm in on the right one yeah here it is okay so these were the enforcement uh allegations uh by year all the way from 2013 and you can kind of see the breakdown i don't know if you guys can see this let me zoom in on a little bit here all right, so you'll see here fraud in other or uh, in other in offer and or sale of securities, and you'll notice here the run up right here that we've seen this. The key is is that they're not even attempting to actually address fraud, but instead going after the sale of securities. So in essence, they're not getting the bad guys; they're going after companies that may have done missteps, didn't file a, a report, or didn't have the clarity in place, and they're simply going after through the litigation format that essentially puts it into play to what's happening with this Genesis Gemini situation. So this to me outlines a very simple thing, and that is the SEC's got an agenda. Everybody kind of knows that. Now we start to see this playing out. They're after the companies in here because these companies pose a risk to the current situation in the financial arena. With that being the case, there's some other things that kind of play into this. I'm going to go over here. Gensler changes tactics uh, in Capitol Hill to crypto fight. There's a couple of things I wanted to focus in on right here. All right. And let's go to the widescreen. Yeah, there we go. All right. So basically, you're talking about the, the staff. So it's, it's still here. Uh, at the end, he's not, taking, he's not talking to the crypto industry, even to lawmakers. Instead, he's talking to the public who, who he hopes can shift the terms of the debate from innovation versus consumer protection to consumer protection that allows responsible innovation. Now, the point, remember, back to the uh, video that we showed in the beginning of the show, that was Gensler talking to American people that aren't invested in crypto, trying to protect them from something they're not even in, trying to scare them into the big bad boogeyman being the crypto innovation market. It's the same exact model. Listen, this has actually happened before in the era of 2020 when we saw a massive expansion in what we know now as the internet. A lot of companies, many of which were major retailers and others that started these uh, anti-campaigns for internet activity. And we saw more and more of this. And I've, I've tweeted a few of those things. Just back then, it was newspaper articles that were being pushed out. Now, it's a narrative on YouTube, and it's being pushed out by some of our government officials, such as Mr. Gensler out there. And again, remember who he's connected to. 
Remember the tie-in to all of this because it does play into what this narrative really means. Here was the press release. SEC charges Genesis and Gemini for the unregistered offer and sale of crypto assets and securities. So this is going to add to the pad that I just showed you in terms of the chart. And further in this, let's go in here. Genesis, uh, part of the subsidiary of DCG, entered into an agreement with Gemini to offer Gemini customers, and including retail investors, even though they're not trying to protect retail investors, an opportunity to loan their crypto assets. Genesis and Gemini began offering the Gemini Earn to retail investors. Gemini deducted uh, an agent fee, sometimes as high as 4%. Uh, from their returns, uh, Genesis paid to Gemini Earn. And then they go on to SEC complaint alleges that Gemini Earn program constitute an offer of sale of securities under the applicable law, should be a registered with commission. Uh, we alleged that uh, Genesis and Gemini offered unregistered securities in, to the public, bypassing disclosure requirements designed to protect investors. Again, this is more on the aspect of almost payment for order flow. And this has been something that has been debated you know, for quite some time. And I think the, the fact is it's going to be there. It's always going to be there because of Wall Street. And I think the scenario that this plays into is that who does not benefit from these kinds of offerings in the marketplace? Think about it. It's the banks. There's only one way that these kinds of offerings start to make a challenge on the traditional markets that are existing out there today. And if they were to succeed in any major level, I mean, go to your Coinbase account right now. What are you getting on USDC? Like 1.5%? Um, that's the example. Remember Coinbase had an earned program that kind of started to, to start and then they reeled back based on the conversation with uh, what happened with the SEC, completely dropped the earned program, mainly because they didn't want to have to deal with these kinds of situations. Then, of course, the SEC goes after BlockFi, as John mentioned, finds them a big amount and now is setting on the bankruptcy docket ahead of retail investors as the second largest creditor. This is shenanigans at best, and it's being conducted by a bigger, bigger narrative. That's what I think we need to focus on in this, in this arena, because I think as we start to see this really unfold, there's going to be some interesting lawmakers that have already started to point in this direction. Congressman Emmers has already ta talked about this at length, about his contention with the SEC. Same thing with Patrick McHenry. All of these are going to simply multiply, and eventually I think the SEC either has to address this or we're going to see Gen Gensler uh, take a walk. Uh, here's Tyler Winklevoss coming back in and responding to this. It's disappointing the SEC chose to file an action today. This action does nothing to further our efforts or help the ARM users get their assets back. The behavior is totally counterproductive. A lot here. We've been discussing with the SEC about EARN program for more than 17 months. Yes, of course. They do this at their will based on when it's effective and when it can help the other markets at large. SEC chose to announce their lawsuit to the press before notifying them. Yeah, of course, that's going to be the case uh, with all this. So again, Tyler just saying super lame. The point is, is not when you look at this, this is more of a hand slap. This is not going to change uh, a scenario around disclosures. These are the kind of things that occur around the industry and Wall Street all the time. Banks, you've seen my video. If you guys have not watched my bank videos, watch them because the banks get more, um, more uh, fines than anyone out there. Wells Fargo, Bank of America, all of those have seen more banking fines because of actions like this or greater, much greater in most cases, that have been significant in comparison. The difference is that's a cash cow to the SEC. It's a cash cow to the infrastructure that is finance for uh, the U.S. government. And it does start to play into some very interesting angles of how this may stifle innovation. Now, if it stifles innovation, who wins? If we stifle innovation here, banks most likely are either going to catch up and slowly work their ways in uh, into a scenario that plays to their advantage for crypto or some sort of decentralized asset, or a CBDC, which also plays into this. This is, I think, going to be a very, very um, interesting position. Let me go further into this right here. Um, Gensler finds new audience for his crypto skepticism. This is the U.S. Army. So he's literally going out and trying to chop into different markets and different uh, segments that basically are just saying, hey, run away from this. This is not for you, uh, even though I I'm not, you know, you can make your own investment decisions. This is happening now all the time in, in the traditional, you know, do-it-yourself trading apps that are out there that have pretty much 
uh, proliferated the markets now into a, a point where almost every you know exchange out there when it comes to trading stocks have already gone in this direction. So again, more half-hearted efforts of what they're talking about. And this is him going into the U.S. Army. Uh, they had a, a Twitter space out there, and then this was with Gensler and uh, Caroline Crenshaw. And he basically just came back in and said, listen, it's the Wild West, Gensler answered, and, and you know, don't do it. You're going to, all this stuff is going to fail. So essentially now you're telling people who are already uh, in certain economic classes that have a chance to maybe take an advantage of what's about to and is happening in innovation around blockchain and essentially limiting their ability to do so. All this is doing is posturing, and it, and it really does nothing for uh, really making the United States the number one place in the world around innovation. Here's Gensler's, Gensler's term. This is what's left with him. Uh, so he's got uh, a term that would be ending on June 5th, 2026. So it's possible we might see him exit or get his walking papers. Uh, in 2024, my guess is with a new president. Most likely that, or and or we see enough pushback from certain regulators and lawmakers that might get enough attention to actually do something. Or he makes a misstep here in basically affecting the wrong companies and VC, Wall Street, and or the banks actually start to eat their own. That's kind of a, a scenario that might play all into this. Remember, uh, Nexo is in the middle of this as well. Uh, they're seeing uh, withdrawals, 158 million in a day after this Bulgaria raid. So they had the raid. There was a couple of things that happened here, and it's very uh, a little bit troubling. Um, but basically, they told the block that the withdrawal number is about two percent of the firm's total assets. Then Nexo confirmed that all systems are up and running. You know, yada yada. But the point is, is not the case. And uh, this particular researcher. Uh, said that active steps are being carried out to be a part of a pretrial investigation at, aimed at neutralizing an illegal criminal activity of, of crypto lender Nexo. And then look at their breakdown of, the, of what they analyzed in terms of the EVM addresses uh, from his database. He found that the firm had about 30, 378 million in total holdings in 19 wallets. About 264 million was its own native token. We've seen that before. And then only 114 million. Now, when I see these kind of activities, remember Nexo has exited the U.S. market, so this is outside of the SEC's guidance. But the point is, is we've seen these kind of shenanigans before. It goes back to the regulatory environment around all of these things. Simply lay out the regulations, simply lay out the guidelines, and then let the companies actually apply to them and adhere to them. It cuts out all of these wrongdoings, and it starts to give you teeth in the ability to go down and actually get the bad guys. That's the thing around the SEC. They already have the teeth in all of the securities market. The amount of fraud that's happening in the securities market right now and insider trading and so on, all that apparently is being thrown out the window so that Gary can go over here and chase down a $1 trillion market share of crypto. That's the difference. Do you see the imbalance here? The problem is not that they're going to gain anything here. This is all about protecting the banks. All right, so this is FTX also coming in. Remember that the um, bankruptcy judge basically said, okay, um, they're going to allow uh, them to start selling other assets. Be aware, there's a few things that could happen here. Judge Dorsey approved the sale of four key units of FTX, uh, included derivative platform Ledger X, stock trading platform Embed, a couple of its uh, regional arms, Japan and Europe. Uh, remember, and you can <laughs> now you can contact the investment bank uh, to actually go in and start on this, um, which is kind of interesting. I, I did something not around this one, but around another uh, bidding in this area that was kind of kind of interesting. Uh, the embattled crypto exchange is reportedly recovered around five billion in cash and cryptocurrencies. This again, according to the FTX lawyer Andrew Dietrich, we don't know how true that is. Rand and I talked about this yesterday on our live stream, and Rand's position was there was a lot of new liquidity, not new liquidity, returning back into uh, potentially back into the market likelihood is is from the bankruptcy courts, so they're going to start releasing some of these assets for sale, uh, whether they get liquidated at you know market value or in distressed positions. I think that will be the, the scenario that plays into this. Remember, there's a half a billion in Robinhood stock. So, you know, Robinhood has its own issue uh, with this as well. So interesting stuff right now, guys. This week has been an absolute crazy, crazy rundown. Here's another one with Crypto.com. 
Uh, this was after we just did a whole situation, not necessarily on crypto.com, but the point being is around a lot of these exchanges. And now their CEO, uh, of course, just here recently, yesterday, uh, announces another 20% in staff cuts, uh, which did not account for the FTX collapse. And again, I don't understand that. That should have been, this to me is just not a good sign for any of these as we continue to see more and more pressure. Now, granted, don't get me wrong. There's a lot of market right now in traditional markets, finance, real estate. Uh, you look at what's happening in the car industry. All of those jobs are starting to really be affected in a big way. So crypto is no different uh, out there. And I think, you know, crypto.com is just going to continue. But it says all impacted personnel have already been notified. The reductions were in no way related to performance. So we just couldn't afford to pay them. Trajectory changed rapidly with a confluence of negative economic developments. Uh, and the economic developments are simple, and that is leverage is out of the market, or most of, uh, even though there is some argument uh, in that. Uh, Greg and I, Greg Foss and I talked about that, that maybe there is still quite a bit of leverage left in the market. I would love to know your, um, your thoughts on that. Make sure and smash like on the video too. It does help us. In terms of getting this news out there around how bad the SEC is, what, the, what this kind of situation has slowly trickled in to help not only create more of a fire in what is already a dumpster fire and just create more instability and stability in the marketplace. So uh, smashing that like button, does your that's your job right now because it does help uh, move out there and, and getting into the uh, YouTube algorithm. We talked about this the other day too, Wire. And this one was secure, uh, concerned me big uh, in a big way because Wire had so many tentacles and have so many tentacles into the onboarding and the framework of crypto. The good thing is they secured funding. The weird thing is we don't know who they secured it from. Uh, but they basically said in an update that they've received funding from an unnamed partner. Let me zoom up on that for you guys. Unnamed partner will resume the deposits and lift the 90% withdrawal effective immediately. So I think this might be good news, but at the same time, it's an unnamed partner. That always makes me look at things very uniquely because it addresses situations. If this was something good, this would be something you would put out there. Uh, there could be stipulations, or it also could be that the deal isn't completely inked, and this is something that just looks like it's going to happen, and they need to cover and manage the, uh, the PR nightmare that is around them right now. Here was Vivi responding to that. Uh, they're going to be assessing wires capability. Remember, there's been a lot already that have moved on to other, you know, other applications out there, including some of the neo banks uh, that we've talked about here, uh, and many of the other projects that are starting to. But VV was one of the big ones that was affected by the wires uh, situation. Last up here is uh, Bank for Central Banks floats uh, ways to contain crypto, including a ban. Now, this is the point that we're getting at, guys, is that there is a stronger narrative. This is really not, I don't believe, the SEC. This is a stronger narrative of central banking, traditional banking, Wall Street at its best, and we'll just call it, you know, the corporate elite. This in, in which controls most of the financial assets around the globe. Uh, this was a breakdown by uh, economist Matteo Aquina, uh, John Frost, and uh, Andrea Shrimp uh, basically wrote uh, disparagingly in the, in the bulletin, basically saying that despite these inefficiencies recently seen in the space, crypto proponents still believe decentralized and blockchains are the solutions rather than the problems. So a lot more here, though, the vision of crypto proponents is to do away with financial in intermediaries uh, yet to function and achieve meaning meaningful scale. Crypto markets rely heavily on decentralized uh, entities for several reasons. Economists pitch three potential options to tackle the risk uh, in the wild. And then you kind of see the extreme option per authors involve their entire ban. This would be an extreme uh, for sure. Uh, activity uh, could be moved to jurisdictions that do not impose the ban and investors may find ways to evade it. That's the problem. And then the main downside is that any useful innovation from crypto would be lost or delayed. That's when I say the main downside, to me, this right here is the main issue across innovation as a whole because you're dealing with a situation right now where technology literally as it is, is at a state we, where we are about to see a massive shift in all things that
that we know in modern day technology. And that in itself, especially finance, gaming, all sorts of business entities, enterprise, B2B, you name it out there, we're gonna see every sector in the market being affected. The other thing is, is by limiting the flow of funds in and out by limiting other connections with TradFi, this firewall-like approach wouldn't be effective, again, due to the borderless uh, aspect of world of crypto. And it's going to ensure the uh, consistency in regulating financial activities. This is their main goal. Again, back to the point. Uh, traditional finance is really the ones they're looking to protect here and promoting policy and all those kind of scenarios that play into this. So I know you guys believe pretty much the same thing that we come to as uh, a result of you know thousands and thousands of hours of research on this stuff and that is the narrative is being constructed uh you have your players we know who they are that's the good part but we don't know who the puppet masters are that's the part that needs to be revealed now is it and could it be dc could it be something greater i believe it is actually more of a greater entity from whether a global uh, entity around CBDC and central bankers, along with what we're dealing with in the traditional finance world that's really controlling and trying to control this narrative as a whole. Just as a, going out on a good note is, let's just go and jump over to the chart. That's Bitcoin for you guys right now because it's just not sleeping. And Bitcoin jumping up here from right here on Monday. What, what have we had for the, for the week here on our climb? To the top at about 5%, but a nice move all the web way up to now over uh, 19. So Bitcoin on its move for sure and tons happening on the uh, overall chart here. I'd love to know if you guys are, are uh, deciding to do something with this. Are you selling your Bitcoin? Or I don't think you are, but you might be. Uh, what are you doing with ETH right now as it continues its track up? Uh, obviously, Avalanche has had a, a massive move up. A little bit of sideways action, but some recovery right here. Interesting stuff. We just, we're getting ready to drop some videos on Avalanche and Ledger over the weekend. We actually have a couple of videos over the weekend that we're going to drop for you guys. It's pretty big stuff too. So hopefully this will help uh, give you some juice for the weekend on, on your research. Let's get over to the poll real quick. Gensler's future in the wrecking crypto, he will be fired. 42%. Yeah. Interesting. Number, number two, com he'll complete the term in 26. See, that's the thing I don't think he'll do because of the the shift we will see a presidential shift i believe and if we do and even if we don't remember we, we still have two years of what these midterms will result in even though it's been a little bit of chaos up there in dc but the likelihood is we'll see more advocates of what's happening in the blockchain space and as we see more advocates it's going to continue to put some more pressure on that a couple of questions here oh whew, man uh, I like Gary's class on Algorand. Um, you know, it's interesting because Algorand is, uh, is, has been doing well lately. But again, one of the projects that we, we've talked to many times here on the show, I really like them. Um, let's see, Nexo, yeah, pretty much gone. Uh, Jimmy Cal, uh, ETH Foundation is registered in Switzerland. Yeah, so that's a big, big issue. Yeah, do you think we're going to see more, uh, more companies really starting to run for uh, jurisdictions that just start to just avoid these kind of situations. That's the concern I have in the U.S. is that it is going to put a huge innovation um, threshold for the United States operations and it's going to immediately, I think, put the United States at a disadvantage technologically. So it's a big one. Uh, do you feel this is a false pump and things will fall soon? So we've been watching uh, sentiment on most of these tokens uh, it is slowing. I will say this. We saw the run up over the past few days, uh, but the sentiment data for most of it, for most of the tokens, there's a handful of tokens that have not necessarily, if you run uh, or know much about our CPI, which is our power index, we, we just dropped our Friday sentiment numbers, some of which have actually held and some are still pumping. I think a few were looking at it. What was it? Uh, let's take a look here. There was a couple that were moving. I think Render was one that was still on, on the move. Flow uh, was actually uh, still one that was on the move. Uh, there were a couple others that were so... Where's Gala today? Ooh, another big pump right here on Friday afternoon up to 51. Oh, okay, hmm. 5.1. Are you guys selling Gala now? I don't know. Interesting. All right, so let's see. Uh, let's see. <laughs> Dylan says, uh, Gary's a closet Bitcoin maxi. I trust Gemini. I think the Winklevoss twins obey the laws and will succeed with their ETF plans. 
maybe eventually. Listen, there's just so much junk in the waters right now. Uh, it is a big problem. Paul, what do you think about Flare trying to... Where did that one go? Let's go back to that one. Let's pull that one up on Flare. Where was that question? I, I saw it there and it disappeared. All right, well, we won't answer it. <laughs> All right, let's see what else do we have here. Um, Flasmac says, the failed attempt to uh, regulation to the SEC the past few decades is why we desperately need decentralized finance, for sure. Agree with that 100%. It's time for crypto to turn its back on... the on a, Ooh, this is a good one. On, a, on American, uh, I think he means American and concentrate on the other 7.4 billion. This is a, the, James, you're right there. I think the scenario is that people look at the overall market and the affluency in the United States is because it moves markets. It, let's just say what it is. It moves and shifts global markets. The only challenge against that is the slowness in which we would see the rest of the world adopt and move. I think if the U.S. is there from a technology and innovation standpoint, this market goes to uh, unbelievable uh, market cap in, by the year 2030, much greater than gold, which is at around 12 trillion. So that alone, I think, is worth it to be able to fight for this uh, for this function. And I think what we're going to see in terms of companies just getting into it in, in the sense of innovation is eventually tech wins. Eventually it does. And I think that's what you have to have faith in overall. Anyway, good stuff from you guys. Uh, again, lots happening here. We're going to continue. To, we're trying to drop more videos on the weekends for you because uh, I know a lot of people can't keep up with it on the weekdays. But if you can't keep up with any of that, best thing to do is jump into the Diamond Circle. It's our email. It comes out a couple times a week. And it gives you kind of a rundown of what we've done, but it also adds some additional content, uh, some of our own blog posts, additional CPI data, all that kind of stuff gets in on that. It's free for you guys to join. Make sure and jump in on that uh, and be part of the PBN family. All right, you guys, if you want to reach me, it is out there on Twitter, at Paul Barron. We'll catch you next time right here on TechBath.